Greetings and welcome, brave citizens of our new world. I am Toronto's greatest supervillain and evil genius, Dr. Terawatt. This is our Layer 3.0, and today is day 20 of our Vita Challenge. VEDA vlogging every day in April, and yes, it is that day again this year, 420, the day when everybody gets all up in arms and all up ons about legalization and all that. But before we get into that, we were sent this lovely picture of a recreation of yours truly by one of our stream folks, Noir, in a game called Champions Online, which is now free to play. And I've tried Champions in the past before, and it being sort of a superhero-ish game was, was really cool. Maybe it was just because I was playing the game in some of its earlier stages and it didn't look as good then as it does now, but who knows, maybe that's a contender for the game we decided to use going forward. On to questions! Hey Doc, now that you've changed your name, are you still employing singing raptors? No, I've been trying to get out of that business for a while now, just trying to stick strictly to robotics. I'm gonna leave the bioengineering to Warden, he's obviously much better at it than I am. If you could hire a musician to make music for your show, what style of music would you go for? What would your opening theme song be like? I'd want to bring on Kevin McLeod in Competech. If you haven't had a chance to check out his stuff, it's absolutely amazing. He just continuously, consistently puts out really good work. You know what, I'll put a link for him in the video description down below, just a quick reminder for myself to do that, because I think that the stuff that he does is really great, and I've done work with him in the past. Like, he's done custom scores for me in the past, and it's all royalty-free. A lot of the stuff that he puts out is, is royalty-free free and you can pay him to do custom music for you. I would want to do something like big and powerful and I want to know like just doing like a new opening sequence. I'd want it to be like really really powerful and really short and just include a lot of clips from stuff from our previous channel and some of the other things that I've done in the past. Have you ever watched The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension? I watched bits and pieces of it because the guy that plays the main actor in it is also the guy who plays Robocop in the original Robocop trilogy. I didn't get a chance to watch it all the way through. It was one of those wacky, old-school sci-fi films, and I just I never had a chance to, to see it all the way to the end. I might go back to that at some point. What kind of tea do you have a preference for? Orange Pico. Nothing fancy. There are lots of things science can't explain, such as lights in the sky, shadowy figures moving through forests and hallways, etc. Do you have an explanation for what you think? Is it ghosts, aliens, time travelers, some sort of unexplained animal or natural phenomenon, or do people just see what they want to see? I think it's a little of both, to be completely honest. I think that there are things that science has yet to explain, not can't, but is not there yet. And I think there's a lot of people who see what they want to see. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson had a long sort of rant about this, how human beings are not comfortable being steeped in ignorance, so in many cases we will make up answers for things that we don't understand. Like, why does the sun go across the sky? Oh, the gods pull it across there. Oh, what is that circular light that's moving around the mountain? Oh, it must be aliens, and instead of a, you know, just a circular cloud that's getting hit by the sun at a certain angle to make it shine like that. Oh, there's a light that's wishing back and forth in the sky as I'm driving after it. Is that, is that a UFO? Uh, no, it's just a star that's going back and forth because the road you're driving on is weaving like so, and you're not paying attention to that. Human eyewitness testimony is seen as legally the greatest form of proof, but scientifically the least form of proof. Is it just me or all your major cities in Canada have at least one space needle somewhere in there? If so, why is that? I don't know, man. Maybe they're just a bunch of uh, really big incognito lasers that are pointed at space in case, you know, something tries to come and invade us from space. Maybe Canada's got like a one-up on that. I don't know. Hello, Doc. I remember you talking about how you got roped into doing a calendar. I was wondering, will each month have a different outfit that us brave citizens can vote on, or will you be picking it all yourself? I will be picking it all myself. No. I know when and when not to allow your opinion to affect the show. But yes, there will be different locations per month. I don't know about different outfits. There's going to be sort of different variations of the same outfit, if not, you know, possibly different full outfits in total. That Big Mike guy is really cool. Will you be doing more streams with him? Why, yes! That Big Mike guy is pretty cool. And as soon as I have time for more streams, I think more streams with that Big Mike guy would be pretty cool. What are your thoughts on genetic modification? Do you believe CRISPR, or clustered regularly, interspaces, short, palindromic repeats, will cure our disease-ridden planet, or is it unethical to mess with our DNA? CRISPR, in sort of short form for folks that are, that are wondering, is the process of hijacking bacteria in their ability to understand and sort of copy-paste 
healthy DNA and other things like that, or to identify and remove certain genetic codes that could be harmful. The one reason why I am probably not going to work with CRISPR is it is a bit more of an involved process and through use of bacterium in the system, like non-engineered bacterium, but like naturally occurring bacterium, they do possess the ability to mutate and I wanna to try to shy away from that. So synthetically engineered viruses is at this time where I'm gonna be going. Plus synthetic biology can achieve the same things that they're talking about, it's just through another means. The question regarding Phoenix virus and regeneration during the change from elderly to 18 slash 23 approximately raised a second question regarding mental regeneration. The physical regen process will be welcome, I used to love apples, but will the regeneration affect mental acuity, i.e. give the newly young a regenerated quickness of thought, access to information, etc., or affect the sharpness and intensity of memory? I used to have a wondrous processing speed between my ears, but I have noticed a reduction in speed and accuracy as I aged. Will that phoenix arise from its ashes? Preliminary tests that we have done on the lab mice have shown that their brains have actually started producing new brain cells. Like you would be at the end of your developmental stage. So you would be able to learn faster, have a much more robust memory system, the whole thing. So, my good doctor and ally, I was only recently being told about the latex um, heroes of a group known as the Heroes of the North. Thoughts, especially Hornet in that case, cough cough. I didn't know that there was another emergent hero force, I'll have to look into that. Street level emergent hero forces are always so interesting to me. What are your thoughts on having personal safety be law? Would you keep laws like having to wear a seatbelt, or do you feel that once they reach a certain age, people should be free to make their own bad decisions as long as it doesn't harm or endanger anyone else? See, people always kind of have that, like, I'm an adult, I can do what I want, I can make decisions for whatever, I don't have to wear my seatbelt, I'm only taking my own safety into account, except that you're not. Situations like whether or not you wear a seatbelt not only affects whether or not someone else wears a seatbelt just through association, but also if you crash into something, your body is going to make a very effective meat torpedo flying out of your car and possibly killing other people or damaging property or doing God knows what. So seatbelts and other safety things are going to be definitely still a mandatory thing. There are going to be laws towards safety. As much as I want people to be able to kind of do whatever and be free as long as they're not harming other people, I also want to make sure that people are being safe and responsible with themselves. And that does, unfortunately, require a few laws in place to kind of coax people in that direction. Oh, and then there's like another 50 cart train that's gonna go by for like a century and a half. <sighs> How would sports play in your world? Would you leave them as such or maybe pass a few new ones that some people create? I got no qualms with the sport. I mean, I don't know a lot about sports as it is. So I don't know if there's like some kind of secret underground bad thing happening with current professional sports. But as I understand, it seems to be fine. And I've got no qualms with just letting people continue enjoying sports, though I would like to see esports become a more mainstream thing. I don't think I even need to ask about your opinion on the current resurgence of white nationalism on YouTube and points beyond your rebranding from Holocaust to Tarawad says it all, but these neo-Nazis, let's just call a spade a twitch, shall we, currently making a hash out of online discourse and the politics of America and Europe. Any specific plans in mind for these people, or will you let your fleet of ED-209s handle them along with the rest of the criminal elements in your brave new world? Oh yeah, no, if, if someone decides that they're going to express their opinion that people of other races are subhuman or something like that by picking up a weapon and attempting to harm those citizens in some fashion, then absolutely ED-209 units and other mechs thereafter will paint the roads with their ignorance. World of Darkness question. Vampire, Mage, Werewolf, or Changeling? I really like Mage. I've tried uh, Vampire, Mage, and Changeling, or at least I've read over the mechanics, and I thought Mage was a lot of fun. I think magic and wizards and stuff is pretty dope. Hey Doc, a bit of a touchy subject for some, but thoughts on legalization coming up next Canada Day? I smoke a bit myself, not Jane Silent Bob levels, but a bit, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this and how the country will respond. Either way, next year's Canada Day will probably be a really good day for the people who make Doritos. <laughs> My opinion kind of goes as so. Scientifically, THC is a non-addictive substance as it doesn't replace any of the chemicals that your brain naturally produces like nicotine or alcohol might. So there is no way to actually develop a physical addiction to weed. Now that being said, it can have long-term effects on people that are smoking it 
before their brain is done developing, like around their early 20s. But the same thing goes for things like alcohol. If you're drinking when you're young, that's going to affect the way that you turn out when you finish developing and get older. There's laws surrounding safe consumption for things like cigarettes and alcohol, so I imagine there would be just as many laws, if not more, surrounding marijuana. The fact remains, though, marijuana has been used medicinally for the last five thousand years, and its criminalization was only brought around because a staunch prohibitionist was trying to keep their job and Nixon wanted to bully minorities. I think that it would be fine. Aside from its recreational use, people just smoking to get high and hang out and just sit around and stuff like that, I would consider just in that facet it's still being better than alcohol, because not only does it make you social, it also makes you really relaxed. Whereas alcohol can kind of start fights. You don't see a lot of people getting high and then going to do anything, let alone start fights. That aside, medicinally, I think that marijuana is leaps forward. I know several people personally who take it to help with pain, like chronic body pain, uh, depression, anxiety, mood disorders, eating, sleeping disorders. It's really good for helping people sort of manage things that they kind of can't get around or that modern medication can't fix. And it is certainly better in some cases than a lot of antidepressants, anti-anxieties, uh, medications you would take for mood disorders, sleep disorders, eating disorders. A lot of those drugs that I've seen, a lot of those drugs that I have uh, been given samples of to try out have a lot of very scary side effects, including things like very serious addiction and death. So you can imagine why I would definitely be okay with like legalization and monitoring. And then on the government side, like the whole medicinal and the recreational thing aside, on the government side, if they legalize a drug that is very not dangerous, then they can not only control it better, but they can also tax the bejesus out of it and make a pile of money that they can put towards doing other things. There's a lot of states in the United States that have started legalization of marijuana that have turned that money around to improve their medical and education systems, which I thought was just amazing. I think it's just, it's super cool. So anyways, that is my thoughts on this matter, and that is all the questions that we have for today. If you guys have any more questions uh, that you would like to ask, anything that you ask that I haven't answered yet, please put it in the comments section down below. And until next time, my brave citizens, I am Toronto's greatest supervillain and evil genius, Dr. Tara Watt. This is our Layer 3.0, and I will see you tomorrow on our next episode of Vita. End of line.